Today we have the privilege and honor of interviewing another prisoner of war. It's uh, Lynn uh, Loken. He's from Sabin, Minnesota. That's just out of Moorhead. He was a bomber pilot in World War II and shot down, become a prisoner. And uh, now he's going to tell us his story of how he won the war. So, <laughs> Lynn, you can just tell us about uh, where you were born and your folks and things and how you ever got to Sabin and Minnesota. And tell us about your schooling and so on. So just go right ahead and tell us as much as you can. Well, I was born in Warren, which is not too far away from here, in, in November 1st, 1918, which is a long time ago. Sure. And you're 80, you're 80, 81 years old now. Yeah, I'm going to be pretty soon. Yeah. And my folks lived in New Fulton, up in Marshall County. My dad died when I was two years old, so I don't remember him at all. But no. uh, then my mother got married again when I was four or five. We lived up by Strandquist. And when I was about six years old, I moved my parents down to, to uh, Norman County. Norman County, where's that now? That's, That's between... Uh, that's north of Clay County, or Moorhead area. Yeah, north, northwest. It's halfway between Crookston and Fargo. Moorhead. Yeah, okay. And you farmed there. then, or did you move Yeah, the folks yeah. farmed there. And I went to school at the Northwest School in Crookston, and finished, uh, I went three years there, and one year in Glendon, which is a little town east of Moorhead. And that's as far as I got to school. What'd you do then, after you get finished high school there? Well, I helped on the farm. And then I had a, then working along, and I had a deferment, farm deferment, but like a dummy, I went and got a job at Lockheed, so <laughs> when the draft board found that out, I was gone in a whisker. They drafted you? Yeah, so I was in, went to Fort Snelling, and then I decided I didn't want to be a ground soldier, so I enlisted in the Air Force. Where was that at? In well, I, I went to... Uh, uh, well, I had to wait a while before I could get in the Air Force. I went to radio school in St. Louis, in East St. Louis, Scott Field. Scott, I see. But then when I got into the Air Force, or they called it the Air Corps at that time, I went to San, San uh, Antonio, Texas for a pre-flight. That's uh, what, what do they do in free pre-flight? Oh, they just get you in shape, really, teach you a few things, some schooling. Then we went to uh, Bonham, Texas for primary flying. We had fl flew BT, uh, PT-19s, which was a single engine monoplane. And after that, we went to Sherman Denison. We flew BT-13s, which was a 450 horse. What was that at, not Denham, Texas? Denison, Texas. Denison, Texas. Sherman Denison, yeah, yeah. two towns together. Oh, yeah. And then we went to Houston and got our commissions, flew uh, Single, single and twin engines. Planes, yeah. After we got our commissions, we went. I asked for fighters, but I didn't get fighters. I got bombers because everybody wanted fighters. Sure. Then we went to Liberty, Kansas, for uh, for training on B-24s. Now, did you were you did you become part of crew or just were just flying? Were just training and flying B-24s? Well, in, in Liberty, Kansas, it was just uh, all training. We didn't put the crews together there. They did that in Salt Lake City. I see. Uh, How long were you there at Liberal in Kansas? Well, I suppose three, four months. Yeah. And you flew then B-24s? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, you f what what kind of training missions did you fly, or where did you fly when you Well, were we training? shot a lot of landings, and we went on a cross-country once to, we were going to go to Minneapolis, and then I was going to come home and buzz the f home farm, you know, but... We had an oil leak, oil leak in the engine, so we had to go to Madison, Wisconsin, and have it fixed. So I didn't get to do that, but I was looking forward to that. Sure. Now, yeah. you were you were a co-pilot then, or? A no, well, we were just plain student pilots. Yeah, you, you were know, student. I see, know. yeah. But I had my own crew for a while, but what had happened, uh, let me see, how did that go? Now, was that at Liberal Kansas? You had this? You had a, you, you were part of a crew there. No, not there. They put oh. the crews together in Salt Lake City. Or oh, Salt Lake City, yeah. Yeah, but w but when we were training there, one day the instructor and I we took a twenty four to see how high we could go. We got it up to about thirty one thousand feet, but they weren't pressurized, you know. No. So when we came down, I must have been catching the cold or something, and my ears 
gave me trouble. So they grounded me for a while. And I didn't get very good uh, instrument training. I really wasn't good at it at all. Oh. And when I got my own crew then, that bothered me. So I went to the captain and I said, I've got to have more instrument training in case I get caught out in some weather, you know? Sure. I didn't want to risk nine other guys' lives besides mine. Well, he says, why don't you fly with this Markham? He's, uh, he's got a lot of hours. He had twice as many as I did. So I went with that crew, and I never did get any more <laughs> instrument training. No. But when we got to Langley Field, Virginia, I took another check ride, and they qualified me, qualified me as the first pilot. So I had that rating. Yeah. Now, but when you, you went to Salt Lake City, you said, for a crew. That's where they put the crews together. I see. Yeah. And they had a pilot, and co-pilot, and a yeah, navigator, and whole crew gunners, there. and everything. Ten, ten people. Ten people. Mm -hmm. Now, did you all move then to... Clovis, New Mexico was our first stop. We did flew you, there around. Did you fly down there, or did you take a train? No, we took a train, I guess. Yeah. I see. Then you got to Clovis. And then you f did you get your own airplane there? Uh, no, we didn't get that till after, then we, after we got through with that phase, we went to Langley Field, Virginia and did the rest of our phase training. And when we got done with that, we graduated. Then we went to New York and got a new airplane and flew it overseas. You flew it overseas to New York? Yeah, New York to Florida, to Trinidad, to two places in, in Brazil, and then across the ocean to Dakar in France, West Africa. Were there a number of planes then that went with this? Yeah, but they never went together. No, know, no. no. No, but this was a group then, or a squadron? No, we were a replacement crew. See. Oh, I see. The rest of them had been there quite a while by that time. I see. We were a replacement crew. You were replacing those that had been shot down then, yeah. or disappeared <laughs> That's right. or something. That's right. <laughs> but we had an interesting experience crossing the ocean, because our navigator forgot that we were south of the equator, and he did his calculations as if we were on the north side. So he got way off course. Oh, gee. So we got about halfway across, and he realized it, so he corrected it, our heading. And so we went across like this. Zigzag. Yeah, but the rest of the guys all ran into a thunderstorm, and we didn't hit it at all. Did you lose any planes on those thunderstorms across the South Pacific? No, oh, I suppose they did, yeah. but not at the present time. No. But we had 200 gallons of gas left after, 20, oh, after 2,700 when we started. You landed there in Africa. In Dakar. Dakar. Africa. How long did you stay there? Well, just a day or two, and then we went to Marrakesh up in France, Morocco. From there to Tunis, and then from there to Italy. Now, when you when you got to Italy, what what base did you go to there? It was near, well, it's Foggia or Cernola. It's over on the east coast. Did your whole group there, a squadron, get there? Then? No, well, we weren't. Oh, you were a replacement, that's yeah, right. Yeah, just a replacement crew. Yeah. Yeah. And you, now, how soon did you start flying missions? Oh, it wasn't very long, two or three days, yeah. And then you went along and, and flew, flew a mission. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, can you tell us how, how you got briefed for that mission, or what, what happened? Did they wake you up early in the morning, or what <laughs> happened? Four o'clock, three o'clock, especially if it was a long one. Yeah. Our first mission was to Milan in northern Italy. We didn't see a puff of flak or a fighter. You didn't. But the next day we got went to Steyr, Austria, and that's where we got our uh, presidential unit citation. We had a, a rough raid that time. You l lose some planes and so yeah, on. Two out of our squadron. Did you fly in formation or? Oh yes, close as you dared. Close as you dared, yeah. Yeah. Now what did you you carried uh, large bombs or? Oh well. It, Depending on the target, it was sometimes different. Some incendiary, some general purpose. Yeah. Did you ever find? Did you ever carry those pamphlets, those propaganda pamphlets? Uh, that yeah, we used to throw that stuff out the window. Yeah, yeah that's right. That'll, yeah. Now, but, but when we came back from that first mission in uh, Milan, Italy, uh, we we lived in tents in there, and I was standing outside the tent, and I heard a forty-five go off inside. And our bombardier had shot himself in the foot, right through the fleshy part. He we did. We thought for sure he did it on purpose. They sent him back to the States. That was the end of him. <laughs> so that'd be a son of a gun. Did, I wonder if they court-martialed those guys. That did. I don't know. They're pretty hard to prove, I suppose. But uh, Yeah. But he, sh yeah. he shot himself in the foot. Right, right through the fleshy part of the foot. Yeah. You know. He's a, he, wait, what was he? 
He was a, bo a bombardier. Oh, t second lieutenant, I suppose? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Uh, second. We were all second lieutenant. They we took him to the hospital and sent him over. You yeah. never heard of him after that. <laughs> never heard of him, but yeah. No. No. Well, I, I know what happened now, right? Yeah. You got a new bombardier then? And oh, yeah. Yeah. No. No. Now, what did, uh, did they feed you pretty good there, that uh, In the base? Oh, oh, no. Where we, when we were flying? Yeah. No, they really didn't. They did, I got up and flew six, seven hour missions and nearly anything. It was just terrible. It what was almost worse than the prisoner of war camp. How was it when you got back? Uh, when, how was it when you got back to the base? Did they give you a drink of whiskey when you got back? Yeah, I think. Yeah, every t uh, after every mission they yeah. did. Yes, yeah. sure. You got a drink of whiskey. Sure. <laughs> I don't know why. And then they they debriefed you then, or oh after, yeah, you know. I had to tell everything that happened. Yeah. And you lived in a tent then with the rest of your crew. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the mess hall was a tent too then. Or there was no permanent barracks there. No, no, there weren't. Yeah. No. Now how 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 many missions did you fly there then? Thirty. Thirty. Well, I didn't quite that many trips, but some of them counted double. I see. Like Floresti and Vienna. Yeah. Now, how f you say you flew to Ploesti? How far was that from your base? Well, you have any idea? In miles or hours? 900 miles, probably. 900 miles, yeah. And you were part of a group then that bombed that uh, oil field there? Well, I, I, that would have to be a round trip, wouldn't it? 900 miles? Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I kind of think th so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. And you you had bombs then? You were bombing the oh, yeah. oil refinery? Mm-hmm. How did that go when you got there? Well, they were tough, those boys. The Germans put up a lot of flak there. They did. Fighters. You lose? Did you lose quite a few ships on that? I think the total of 15th Air Force lost 350 bombers. On all the on raids? That, on that one target. On the one target, yeah. 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 And I suppose uh, half of them were POWs and half of them died there. Yeah, well, yeah. There were a lot of POWs in Bucharest. Yeah. How far is Bucharest from that Polesti? Well, just a few miles, 20 miles probably. Oh, I see. Yeah. If you were shot down in Polesti, then they sent you to Bucure Bucharest. No, see, we flew for an hour and a half after we got hit. Oh, yeah, in your case, yeah, okay. Yeah, we lost those two engines on the outside. Yeah. And then you flew, but you were going down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, first when we got hit, the that we got hit by under aircraft and it threw the airplane up and we dropped about 5,000 feet. You did? But we got it under control and we were flying about 115 miles an hour, but you were familiar with air, the engine settings. Yeah. They were redlined at 47 inches of mercury for yeah. a couple of minutes. Yeah. We ran us at 60 for an hour and a half. Yeah, I, I, I realize that. Guys put them to the limits, you know, when they were. Yeah, and yeah. We were only flying 115 miles an yeah. hour towards the end. But you, you, were in, you stayed in the air. Yeah. Now, what uh, what caused you to jump out, or what happened there? Well, we were down to 1,500 feet, and we, it was either that or crash landed. Yeah. And then you decided to mm -hmm. you push the emergency escape bail. Yeah, we left the thing on automatic pilot and bailed yeah. out. Bailed out, yeah. So you were telling me that on one of the one of the groups there that the the pilot uh, crawled out the pilot window. Yeah. Could yeah. you tell me about that? Well, it was Colonel Graff. He was our executive officer. And uh, <coughs> we had a, an engineer on the ground, of course, for each airplane. Yeah. And we got, when we got shot down, he wanted to fly, so he was flying with this colonel the day they got hit. They got a direct hit on the flight deck, and this engineer's brains <coughs> were scattered on the back of his jacket. Dang. And he couldn't get out there, so he went out the side window, which is not very big. But no. he was a big man. Yeah. You can show there, you show, hold it there, and you can see where, it, yeah. where that's, he was the pilot now. He got yeah, out, he, yeah, he, was, he, he was, had to get out there. He was the colonel. They couldn't get out any other place. No. He said he put his feet against the yoke and just pushed himself out. Yeah. And the plane, I suppose, disappeared or never yeah, heard of yeah, it. Never heard about that no. guy. But he was—he got to be the commandant of the camp because he had most rank. That is, the prisoner of war camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what about that mission you were shot down on? Now, what what happened there when you when you jumped out or you? Well, we got hit. Uh, the, the, evidently, the Germans fired four guns in a battery because I looked out ahead and I could saw one burst go off, and then the second, then the third, and then the fourth one off right under the airplane. 
on the airplane. And the two us up and dropped 5,000 feet. Of course, then we fell behind. Sure. And the fighters jumped us. And they knocked the top turret off and the, and the rudder in the back and I don't know what all. So I called the engineer out of the top turret to uh, shut the gas off on number one and four so there wouldn't be any more chance of fire. And he barely got out of there and a the cannon shell went off up in there and it blew it right off. He would have lost his head if he had been in there. Yeah. But he got up, did he? Yeah, he got up. And did you all get out of the plate? Yeah, we all bailed out. But I was flying co-pilot, and uh, the pilot was the last one, of course. He was on the leaving his seat when I left. Yeah. And uh, he got picked up by the civilian police. We got picked up by the military. And in where? Yugoslavia or in Italy? In Bulgaria. Bulgaria, okay. Yeah. But what happened is that uh, he never... Two of our enlisted men had gotten hurt, so they were on the train and they saw him there. But they ne he never admitted that he knew them or anything. No. So they thought he was a spy or some darn thing. Yeah. They took him out on the hill and shot him. Shot uh, the pilot. They shot the pilot? Yeah. yeah. It took me 41 years to find out what happened to him. Yeah. Now. I, I got to tell you that story because I was. Uh, I. Uh, kept in touch with her for a while after the war and then forgot about it. And One day I was reading a Reader's Digest story about hearing loss. Yes. And there was a uh, story about a Lois Markham. Yes. That, um, that, uh, that was her name. I knew it because they named him her after my wife. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now that was, he was the pilot on that ship that you yeah. were shot down on, okay. Anyone, anyway, 41 years later then, I wrote to the Reader's Digest and I asked me if I could get in touch with this woman. Yeah. And she sent me uh, War Department memos and stuff that said that they took him out on a hill and shot him with some political prisoners they had. I see. Well, that, that happened to a lot of the guys. They, you yeah. know, after they shot out, there was a dangerous period between time you were shot down until you got to your camp. If yeah. the wrong people picked you That's up. That's right. Uh, oh boy. But now, uh, you, what kind of clothes were you wearing when you were shot down? Well, we had flying suits because yeah. it was pretty cold, you know. Yeah. At 20,000 feet, it's about 40 below zero. Yeah. And uh, when you, when, did you jump out through the bomb bay or how did you, yeah. yeah. We had uh, had a malfunction of the bomb mechanism and we had dropped the bomb through each one of the bomb bay doors yeah. instead of being able to roll them up on the track, you know, like yeah. they went. They were swinging in the wind, and when you had to just sit there and wait till they swung apart and then Jump out. drop out. Did Jump you have through. a chest pack or a backpack? Uh, we had pilots had real thin backpacks. Maybe, I you, see. Uh, yeah. maybe you had those. Now, what happened then when you jumped out of the plane? What what kind of weather was it, or where? Oh, where that, were you? The weather was fine, but it was fifteen hundred feet, and I pulled my ripcord once and it didn't open. And you know, fifteen hundred feet, you go into hundred miles an hour. It doesn't take long. No. I pulled it again, I was right on the ground. I never got to see the ground or the airplane or parachute or anything. I landed in a plowed field, which was lucky, because I really hurt my leg. I didn't really, yeah. I just hurt it some. In other words, when you pulled the chute, then it opened you right then. The second time. <laughs> yeah, then you <laughs> the first hit the ground. Time, yeah. First time I only pulled it out of the yeah. case. What about the other members of your crew? They all made it out. Yeah. All made it out. Yeah. Then what happened? Well, we got picked up by military in a little town there called Pleven. What what kind of military were they? Bulgarians or? Yeah, Bulgarians. Yeah. And now were they on the German side or oh were yeah. they? Oh yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. And they put us on a truck then in the evening. There were thirteen of them with submachine guns, and seven of us. So they had us outnumbered pretty good. And where'd you go then? We went to Sofia, which was the capital of Bulgaria, and they kept us there for a few days. that a big city? Well, not really big. Yeah. Well, I suppose. I, I have no idea. No. You s did you meet any other crews there? Not there, no. And then after a few days, I took us to another camp and finally we got to this one up in the mountains near uh, the Black Sea. There we had beds and everything, but we didn't have that before. No. I slept right on the concrete floor with a little mat about that yeah. deep. Of course, I shouldn't complain when so many others had it ten times worse. Yeah, sure. Well, that's every 
Yeah. That's one way of looking at it. Every, yeah. You know, you get a you get into a situation, and you look around, and the next Same guy's got food worse. and everything else. You know. Yeah. You got <laughs> some food there? Water? Yeah, in a prisoner war camp. Well, yeah, that. Yeah, or in Sofia, yeah. yeah. But they had uh, they had us in the building there, and outside in the hall, they had some political prisoners, and they they beat them with black snakes right outside the door. They did. That sounded terrible. They were women and men both. Well, I see. Mm -hmm. They just beat them with those big whips. Yeah, they just cried and screamed. They never quit. Yeah. They claimed that they pulled the fingernails off, but I never saw that. No. With pliers. Now those were civilians. Yeah. Then what happened? Did you, how long did you stay there? I can't remember. We were probably there three or four days, and then we went to another camp, which wasn't much of anything. And finally, we marched all day to this one up in the mountains. What was the name of that camp or a place? Schumann. Schumann. Schumann, Schumann yeah. And how many, did you run into other prisoners there, Americans? Oh, yes, yeah. There were 350 altogether, some British, some Yugoslavians, Americans. What kind of facilities did they have there? Well, we had beds anyway. <coughs> but, yeah. What about food? Did you get food there? We got a loaf of black bread every day. Each person or? Each? Uh, yeah, and uh, so once in a while uh, they'd give us some soup. It looked like it was made out of grass. Yeah. One day there was a goat head in there and it had eyeballs and all. <laughs> some, some guys ate it. Yeah. <laughs> goat head. One day one of the our enlisted men picked up his loaf of bread and it was moldy. Yeah. He threw it back against on the table and it bounced and <laughs> broke a window. So I, I was the officer of the day. I had to go and apologized to the commandant. But they put him in solitary for two days. <laughs> Other than that, we really didn't lose weight or anything. This bread kept us going, but... Uh, what kind of you, what kind of clothing did you have there? On just what we had. Was, we didn't get anything was, What else. time of the year was this now? It was in, uh, from April to September. April to September. Uh, I mean, May. This oh, May, yeah. May, May. So it was warm, thank goodness. Yeah. Then what happened after that? <coughs> well, there was three had about three hundred men, you say, in this one camp. Yeah, there were about three hundred and fifty, yeah. really. Well, then about in uh, September. Of uh, forty-four. Yeah, forty-four. Uh, you could hear the Russians were coming in. We, we could hear them, the tanks and stuff. Hear the noise. I mean, yeah, you they were the coming noise. in from the from the east. From the east, yeah. And our commandant, that colonel. He went to the Bulgarians and said, now you better take good care of us or we're going to tell them that you've been really mean to us and all. So they put us on a train and shipped us to Turkey and then we went from Turkey to... You went from, well, I was, you trained from uh, Bulgaria to Turkey? Yeah, on a train. On a train. And then we went from... Uh, How'd you get across the Black Sea there? Or did you go we through... flew. Oh, you we flew? Flew from Turkey. I Cairo. mean, how'd you get to Turkey? On a train, you say? Yeah, to Turkey. And then it t they flew us from Turkey to Cairo. Oh, yeah. And then from Cairo, oh, that's they Americans? flew us. Yeah, oh, yeah. C-46s. C-40, yeah. How many, how many were there, you prisoners, then, together there? Well, just the 350 of us. Yeah. Uh, you Were you all Americans or other nationalities? All, a lot of others. Yeah. Yugoslavians, too. Yeah. Some of the underground people there. Yeah. And, and the British and... Whoever else was yeah. fighting. French Where'd you go in Turkey? We in uh, Istanbul. We stayed on a ship in the harbor. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then they took you off the ship and put you on a airplane. Ship. Yeah. Took us to Cairo. What'd you do? How long were you there in Cairo? Then? Uh, just a couple of days. But I got sick in Cairo and uh, I didn't get back with the rest of them. The rest of them got back ahead of me. Oh yeah. So I was there a couple of extra days. We stayed right there in the. You go to a hospital or anything? or? No, I don't remember. I don't know what was wrong, but I, I must have had a terrible fever because my fingers felt like they were big balls on the end. Oh. And then they finally flew you back to... They finally went back, but everybody else was back by that yeah. time. They flew you back to your home base? Yep. Mm -hmm. What happened then? Well, we stayed there a while, and then they put us on the ship and sent us back to the good old USA. How many missions did you fly all together then? Thirty. Thirty. Mm -hmm. Was that about the average for the... Oh, <laughs> our bomber really got, was his first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
the replacement for the guy that shot himself in the foot. Yeah. Yeah. What That's about right. the other crew members? They were hurt some or damaged? Or? Uh, the tail, the guy that ran the tail turret got his, flak, his face full of small pieces of flak. Oh, yeah. Just peppered with it. And then you got back to your base, and then uh, what happened? Uh, what, what time of the year was that then? Well, that was in September. September of 44. 44, yeah. Yeah, September. It's about four months I was in a prison camp. Yeah. Then where'd you, where'd you, then they, where'd, what happened then? Well, they put us, well, they uh, flew us to Naples, and from there we got on the ship and went back to the United States. Yeah. What time of the year was that then? Well, that was in September. September. Uh, yeah. 45 then, maybe? 45. Yeah, 45, yeah. No, 44. 44. 44. Yeah. Well, the war was still going on then. Oh, maybe. sure. You bet. How come they sent you back to the States when the well, war Well, they, they wouldn't let us fly any more missions after we got shot down. Because you'd been prisoner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were there quite a few of you then that on this went back yeah, on this ship? There were 6,000 men on the ship. I don't know where they all came from because the war wasn't over. No. Where'd you go then? Well, they sent me home to Minnesota for a while. You, where'd you land? New York or, or where? Yeah, in, uh, in Langley. Langley Field, Virginia. 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 And then you went to... Uh, they sent me home to yeah. Minnesota for for R&R. &R. Yeah. Or just for vacation. Then we went to Miami for R&R. But when I got paid, I had $1,800 bills when I went to home to save them. I guess you were a rich man then. Was I? That was a lot of money those days. Oh, yeah. I think I made $440 a month with flying pay and something. Yeah. That's a lot of money those days. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, I, I, went, I had to have a car because I, we got married with this young gal back here. <laughs> yeah. When did you get married? When? Yeah. In, in November 25th, 1944. November 26th, So I had to go to Miami to R&R, &R, Miami yeah. Beach, so I had to have a car. Your wife went with you then? Yeah, after we got married. Yeah. But we went to, the, to a used car lot. There was one car on the lot, a 1939 Buick, and they wanted $1,075.75. You wouldn't need a knock off the 75 cents. <laughs> so we bought the thing, and it was really a wreck and didn't have good tires, but we f drove to Florida 35, 40 miles an hour. Yeah, speed limit was 35, I think. Yeah. And you stayed down there in Florida then for? Yeah, R&R, &R, and then yeah. I went, we went to all the place in Georgia and then Scottfield and... Your wife was with you now all the time. Oh, yeah. 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 And you had that Buick. Yeah. <laughs> what was left of it. It wasn't yeah. a very good car, but there wasn't anything else. No. No, it was tough to get a car. Oh, yeah. How, uh, when were you, uh, when were, where were you discharged then? Camp McCoy. Camp McCoy, uh, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, what, you don't remember just when that was you were discharged about? Uh, September 45. Five. The war had ended then. Yeah, the war was over then. Yeah. And then you went back to uh, Sabin or wherever? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what did you do then? Well, we started farming. Yeah. Her father-in-law was farming, and he gave us a start. Yeah. And the row crops or grains? Yeah. Potatoes mostly. Those was the money crop those days. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it wasn't. You ate many cattle or? No, hogs? never had any. Never no. had any. Just potatoes, yeah. Potatoes and small green. Yeah. Where was your wife from? Right next door. Right next door. Mile and a half down the road, or a mile and a quarter down the road. Oh, and from uh, from the farm. Mm-hmm. Then how many children did you have? Three. Three. They're growing up, I suppose. Oh gosh, yes, yeah. they're in their fifties and forties. Yeah. So you got a bunch of grandchildren and so on. Not a bunch. Uh, a few, two or yeah. three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many years have you been married now? Fifty-five the, in November. Fifty-five. It's well, a long time. The honeymoon isn't over yet, though. I see. <laughs> Fifty-five years. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they said it would never last. No. Yeah. How about your uh, brothers and sisters? Are they li still living? Or? Yeah, I have a sister that's 82 and a half-brother that's, uh, I don't know, 70-something. Oh, yeah. How's their health? Pretty good? Oh, uh, my sister's in uh, Eventide in Moorhead. She's, she's pretty pretty good. But yeah. How's your health? Well, I'm still navigating. I've had a heart attack and five bypasses. Recently or years ago? Well, the bypass, uh, heart attack was when I was 43. 43 years old? Yeah. Yeah. 
now I'm 80. But uh, I had five bypasses. That's two years ago. Two years ago. How have you felt since then? Pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Well, I have my days when I don't have much energy. But oh, yeah. Where did you have that done? Well, in Fargo. On Fargo. Medicare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, how, how, how has the government treated you since you got out, since you left the service? And so well, on? they don't pay much attention to me. No. <laughs> Now they uh, did you do, you do you have much dealings with the DA at Fargo? I used to go there. Uh, I still go there for the dental work. Yeah. But after I had this uh, had to have this bypass, there wasn't any time to fool around, and they didn't do it there. See. No. Oh. So I went to Medicare in Fargo, and sure. And so I've been kind of going there ever since. But yeah. I go back to the VA once in a while. Yeah. You can get medication there for two bucks, one. it might be yeah. 150 at another drugstore. That's store. right. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what do you think is about uh, about these young people today? You know, uh, compare thinking now, make a comparison with yourself, uh, seventy seventy years ago, sixty years ago, high school and so on. 60. What about what about the young people today that are in high school or college? How do you how do how do the young people today stack up with you guys when you were eighteen years old? Well, I think they know a lot more than we did. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know they do. Yeah. They're much better informed than we were. Yeah. Yeah. You think they'd be just as patriotic and brave and so on? I don't wonder about that. Yeah. I don't really know. No. Well, it's hard, hard to tell, yeah. of course. Yeah. You I can't tell know. unless you put, yeah. No. But that was quite a generation that we were in. Well, it was, yeah. That's right. Have you read that book by Tom Brokaw? Yes, I have. I yeah. do, yeah. Now, uh, uh, you know, these films we're making here is a little bit like that. And it kept here. Here, we're dealing with the actual person. I mean, you're, the, you know, I'm, you're not telling your story to a third person now. You're telling a story so that we can see it right on television. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's kind of better. It's a little better than his, the, these tapes we're making. See, we got yeah. about, uh, say, 25, 35 tapes, and, and we, each guy, we talked for an hour or so. And I think it's it's uh, it's quite valuable historically, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, what do you what do you think is maybe the biggest problem that our country faces these days? What do you? I mean, you know, there's millions of things, of course. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know if you think it's drugs or war or education. Well, or that's a problem. Enemy or and that is a problem that drug business, but I don't know why it should be. I don't know. There's got to be other ways to get your kicks in that. <laughs> Yeah. But it doesn't seem to be. Yeah. How are your kids doing? Fine. Yeah. The oldest one, David, is president and CEO of Hawker Pacific. Of what? Hawker Pacific. They repair landing gears on airplanes. Oh, I see. In Burbank, and they got a place in London and one in the Netherlands. Oh, I see. Well, that's And he's president of that. Sounds like a pretty big job. Yes, it is. Important job, too. That's for commercial airlines or any kind, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. Be repair landing gears on 747s and all those. Yeah. Costs a half a million bucks to repair the landing gear. It does. <coughs> on 747. Then our second boy, Gregory, is a real estate manager for Brugger's. It's a restaurant chain in Minneapolis. Oh, I see, yeah. And our daughter is a med tech at Abbott Northwestern, oh, Minneapolis. I see. And she's married to a eye doctor. Yeah. Well, they're all they're all doing well then. Yeah, not too bad. No. Not I'm in jail. No. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, if you were going to live your life over again now? What what changes would you make? Do you think? Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't want to do the same thing, but it's still is an experience I wouldn't want to no. have been without either. Yeah. Have you been quite active in church there at Saint? Oh yeah. What what church have is that? Trinity Lutheran in Trinity Sydney. Trinity Lutheran, yeah. Well, a lot of Lutherans in this part of the country. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, we, every Sunday we show up there. Sure. Yeah. Well, I suppose you have grandchildren too, but they're not around here. No, they're not around here. No. No, they're not around no. here. They come up to see you once in a while, or you go down there, I suppose, yeah. over here. Yeah, they get to the point where they're getting older and they... Well, they get to be teenagers and so on, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's more fun to do something else than go and see Grandma and Grandpa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, 
that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and of course they all have cars and everything these days. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Now, what, do you have any hobbies that you at home now, or just kind of... Uh, Most of the time I'm spending cutting grass. I've got about a four-acre long... I see. Is that a pretty good paying job? <laughs> I haven't collected anything yet. I see. How's your wife's health? Oh, she's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. She's ornery as ever. I see. Well, she's trying to keep you, keep you in line, keep I suppose. Line, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of doing. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> well, is there anything you want to tell the world now when you close mm, here? Uh, well, no. I think we've covered most of it. Well, I think we have, too. We found out a little bit about you, and found about your war experience, and so on and so forth. How we won the war. How you, how you won you, the war. You and I together. <laughs> okay, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> how many yeah. missions did you get, you said? Uh, I was shot down at 17th mission. 17th? Well, yeah. That's enough. Well, the average number of missions in Europe where I was flying was 16. Yeah. So that's, I, I hit it right on the nose just about. Well, I got that Over? 17th. Yeah. We've got plenty of time. You could back up and talk more about the prison camp and camp life if you wanted to. Okay. Say, stepping back a little bit, in that in that camp that you in, uh, this was in Bulgaria now, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, was, has that country, was that whole country, had that been taken over by the by the Germans? Oh, yeah. I suppose it had. There were German... Yeah. Now, what about that camp there? What kind of a camp was it where those 300 men were at? Well, the last one, we were, which was pretty decent, it was a, kind of a barracks up in the mountains that had a wire fence around it and, and guards at the gate, of course. Sure. Uh, I, we had... Uh, there was a mountain stream, so we could go and take a bath, but the water was so cold you couldn't stand it. I see. And when they knew that we were going to get out, then they took us down into the town and gave us a, a real bath and a, a steam bath and stuff. Oh. So we had one during four months. Yeah, sure. Good one. <laughs> what about the food? What about the food there? Well, that bread, loaf of bread every yeah. day we got. Did out. they have roll call then? Or? Oh, yeah, every day. Had every to, day. Had to get. What did you do? Fall out in formation? Oh, and absolutely. Germans counted you? No, they were Bulgarians. Bulgarians. They were on the side of the Germans. And, you know. But their military is a little different than us. Uh, if the if the guy at the gate, I saw him one day, he didn't. He must have done something wrong. The commandant walked up to him and slapped him, hit him in the face. Then he made him stand at attention again, and he hit him again. You couldn't do that in our army. No. no. Of course, Patton tried it. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but they were yeah. enlisted men. They didn't have much to say. No. Now, did, were there any work details out of that camp? No. Of course, they weren't supposed to work officers anyway. No. Were they all off, most of them officers there in that, your camp? Well, not all of them. No. Quite a few of them. Yeah. Flying officers, mostly. Yeah. Those officers that they did have were NCOs, were all flyers, I suppose. Oh, yeah. 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 What about these foreigners that were there? Well, I don't know where they came from. They must have been captured. They must have been underground or something, something that they ca yeah. captured. Now, that... That barracks that you lived in, did they have beds there? Or yeah, we had beds, bed. finally. Yeah. yeah, two or three deckers? Or? Uh, two deckers, yeah. Two deckers, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about utensils or clothing? And uh, Did you well, have any utensils? No. Just a bowl or something? Yeah, that's right. Did you ever get any Red Cross parcels there or anything like that? Yeah, we got a Victrola one time and, and two records. Well, one, one record. And one record. One, one was Peg in My Heart, and I can't remember the other <laughs> You got that from the Red Cross? Yeah. Well, I think they confiscated everything that came their way, our way. I see that they wanted uh, yes, sure. Yeah. They were kind so of a poor, stupid country, I thought. So when they Backward. Got, yeah, when it got to your place, there wasn't much there left. There wasn't much left. No. They confiscated the whole business. Yeah. Did many people get sick in that camp? Yes, some of them were sick. In fact, the day we got out, one guy we didn't think was going to make it at all, but he, he did make it, but he was really pretty far gone. What, any mental or physical? I, or Physical, I don't know. He got sick somewhere or another. Yeah. Probably got something bad to eat. Sure. He ate too much moldy bread or something. Yeah. <laughs> How, you guys lost weight, I suppose? And really not much. Okay. I didn't have an awful lot to lose in the first place. No. Well, no, most of the guys didn't weigh too much. No, no. No, right. they kind of kept us. Yeah, kept you alive. We didn't do much exercise or anything. No. Wear it off. 
What about uh, this soup that they made? Did the, did, they, did you guys make the soup or did the Bulgarians make it? No, the Bulgarians did it. Yeah. But it <laughs> you don't know what was in the soup? No. The only thing is that goat's head with the eyeballs and all that's all <laughs> I remember. But that soup, that it looked like made out of grass because there was all little clippings like that. Yeah. But you couldn't eat that stuff either. No. Just warm water with it or something. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Lukewarm water. What kind of, how are your shoes? Did you have shoes? Yeah, flying clothes. Yeah. You sell it in flying clothes. Yeah. I, I don't know if we had shoes inside our boots or not. I can't remember. I suppose we did. Yeah. I think we did. Do you remember that? Yeah, well, I, I, uh, I was a little confused that my shoes, I lost mine when I pair shoes out that, you know, that oh. jerk would took them. Oh, took, took them right took, off. Took them right off, yeah. That's quite a jerk, isn't it? Oh, it's, a, it's a son of a gun, boy. <laughs> now, how... Did you, in this camp that you were at, where there was 300 now, did some, did you had a American colonel that was kind of the head of the... Yes, he was. Yeah, and he dealt with the Bulgarians. Mm -hmm. Were there any of you that could speak Bulgarian or... Not that I know of. No. no. Of course, they, there was maybe some that could speak German and they could speak... I wouldn't doubt it. There were a couple yeah. of Yugoslavians that they could probably yeah. make themselves mo uh, understood. Yeah. Of course, you don't need many instructions. No. Did they keep the guards around? It was the f area fenced in? Oh, yeah. Guards at the gate. Yeah. yeah. It was a regular permanent mm -hmm. camp. Yeah. Then, uh, now how far away were the Russians when you heard them? Well, they couldn't have been too far. We could hear them. We yeah. hear the tanks rattling. Now you could hear them at night, I suppose. Well, it didn't they take us long after we could hear them until this guy saw to it that we got out of there. Yeah. Well, that's, you were lucky that way. Yeah, we sure were, because they wanted to send us to Sofia, back to Sofia, the capital, but he said, we're, we're going to Turkey. Yep. And we did. Yeah. Now, so how did you get to Turkey again? On a train. On the train. And Turkey. Turkey, of course, was neutral. Yeah. Well, you were lucky you got, oh, you yeah. got there, yeah. They could've, we could have gone to disappeared behind the Iron Curtain. That's right. Which happened to some. Yeah. Now, did you, on this train, do you remember how what facilities were on the train, or how long it took you, or? No, oh, I don't know, just three, four hours, I think. I see. And then you crossed over the Bosphorus Straits yeah. there, I think, and into Turkey. We flew, or, uh, you may, I mean, we flew from Turkey to Cairo. To Cairo, yeah. Yeah. What, was that, a, did the airport, was that a pretty big airport there in Turkey? Oh, I or? can't remember at all. No. No, I can't remember. But they took all of you? Yeah. Not all at one time, I guess. No, no, no. Three hundred and fifty. Yeah, and you come, you landed in Cairo. Mm -hmm. And how long did you stay there? Well, I stayed there longer than the rest yeah. of them because I got sick. But I think it's just a day or so, and the rest of them. What were happened there. to your, their, your sickness? What kind of sickness did you have? I you don't know. know. I just must have had a terrible fever because it, I, my fingers just felt like they had big balls on the end. Did it? Did it, it disappear then? After yeah, two, after a couple days, it got better, and I went back to Italy. And Good as gold again. Yeah. How about the food there in Cairo? You get any food or tea? I, I can't remember that at all. No. Yeah. I suppose that was half decent. Yeah. 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 Then what about the food? You got pretty good food, and you got back to your base, I suppose. Well, a little better than what it used to be, I guess. When yeah. we were flying, it was just awful. It was, yeah. They had eggs, you know, what are the candled eggs or whatever they were? They were oh, the practically green, you know, most yeah. of the time. Sure. No, I'd fly an eight, nine hour mission and never eat a breakfast. No. We used to have juice along though. Yeah. Sometimes uh, apple juice and... Did you ever juice. have cotton candy on your missions when you flew? We might have. I don't remember that no. either. No. You flew pretty tight formations? Oh yeah. In a box? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the boys in the back said we... they complimented us on being able to fly a good formation. Yeah. Well that's important. I mean, the pilot and co-pilot took turns on us oh, back yeah. and forth. Yeah. If we were flying on somebody's Left wing, I would fly, and if we were flying on somebody's right wing, yeah. he would fly. Yeah. But when we come home, you know, we used to fly across the Adriatic, and we used to see how close we could get to it. It was really stupid. Yeah. We practically stuck the wing in the other guy's waist window. Yeah. But that was really stupid. Sure. But you were young, you know, and yeah. full of vinegar. Yeah. If the, one of those engines would have missed the beat, or I... But the end of it, yeah. But those were tough engines. Boy, we yeah, those were uh, Pratt and Whitney's. Pratt and Whitney, yeah. Red landed 47 inches of yeah. mercury, flew yeah. for an hour and a half at 60. Yeah.
they were red hot. Yeah. No uh, oil pressure. No. Oh. The uh, B-17s had the uh, right, cycle. right cycle, you know, they were slower. And yeah. Uh, the B-24 engines were hard to listen to. They made the person tired. I mean, they were very, <laughs> they were loud. You know? Yeah, they should have had those on the 17. They would have had a better airplane. Well, they would have <laughs> I, I flew a few missions in the 17, and they were nice. I mean, they were quieter, you know. They were, huh? Oh, yeah. I never got into 17. Uh, they were like, much like a diesel. It just, the uh, B-24 engine was kind of like a gasoline engine. The B-17 with the right cycle was more like a diesel engine, you know, oh. quieter and slower, and, slower. you know, and, and so a lot easier on the pilot. This, that B-24 was tough on the pilots. <laughs> you really had to be on the ball there. Yeah. You ever do any flying after the war? No. No. no never did. No. Well, ever? I had my thrills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it was real nice visiting with you. Yeah, it and, was a uh, good deal. They'll make a tape here and give you, so you'll have something to give your your Kids, children and yeah. so on. And uh, you know, if they would have had jet engines on that, that would have been quite an airplane. Wasn't yeah. It? <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the B-52s, of course, they got their yeah. look kind of like that. The engine, they got jets on there. Do you ever see any of the German jets? I I saw them in the air, a couple yeah. of. Them. But we that's did, all. We did too. Yeah, I never uh, saw one close or anything. We saw that 262 that went by in front of us. We couldn't believe anything could go that fast. No, I know. I was surprised too. Myself, yeah. Did you throw that, uh, the, what do they call it? Chaff? Wind window? They yeah. called it window chaff. It yeah, we, fl we, we threw, threw a lot of that but because we were usually the lead plane, lead oh. crew, see? Mm -hmm. So it comes in big bales. Yeah. And they caught it up, and then the, throw it out the gunners would throw it out. Uh, well, you could, yeah, throw out the window or throw out the back. They, I think in the ships we flew, some of them had a door in the back there to drop it through. See? Yeah. yeah, right out the. Yeah, had the silver pressure. on one side and uh, to confuse the gunners. I don't know about the 17, but the, the 24 had a hole in them. That's where they bailed out to. Yeah. Right out of the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't remember if we had a hole back in 17 or not. I know they, they usually went out to Bombay or. Mm -hmm. Or you could go out the window, of course, in the side door, go out in the front there too. Yep. Did you get? Have you? How's your health been since you got out of this? Oh, sir? pretty good. Pretty good. I got a lot of TLC back there. Yeah. So, uh, and they uh, since you got out, you've uh, your health has been pretty good, except for your heart. You say. Heart, yeah. yeah. Other than that. Yeah. Did you work? Did you work farm work then after you got out and so on? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Raised potatoes and threw those hundred pound sacks around for twenty four years. Yeah, well, that's good for your muscle and bad for your heart. Weighed as much as I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where'd you haul your potatoes? Oh, pardon? Where'd you haul your potatoes? Well, we used to load them in uh, freight cars. Oh yeah. Well, once in a while a trucker would come along, but yeah. most of them went in freight cars. Yeah. Certified seed. Yeah, went down four south. years. Yeah. Down to Florida and uh, Alabama and those yeah. places for seed. Yeah. Well, it was nice that's visiting a, with you. Yes, that's right. I am uh, glad you found out a few things about you, and we'll have the tape here for your kids to Good. look at, and uh, they can uh, kind of hear, learn a little bit more about you. And of course, they know a little bit about it, but they don't. They aren't that interested. <laughs> well, no, but they get a, a more or less a full story here, and here they get to see you, see when you're yeah, talking. And the older they get, the more interested they'll get. Well, that's that's right, yeah, yeah. sure, yeah. But they're busy with their own lives now. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But still, surprising how young people come up. Would you like to be?